Out of all the US states whose scary stories I haven't talked about yet, Ohio is perhaps the most requested one. At first I thought it was just people from Ohio who were requesting it, but then I began looking into the actual stories from there, and now I think that people from all over the world must have heard some of the creepy tales from this state. It honestly has some of the best in the whole country. You'll see exactly what I mean if you can make it to the end of this video. My name's Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 scary Ohio urban legends. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Blue Flame Ghost. The story goes that in the 1930s, a woman lived in Ohio's Sugar Grove. She was young, happy, and liked by everyone. She fell for a young man who had a terrible temper, and the couple were often seen arguing in the town. Over time, the locals noticed her changing. She never smiled anymore and began to grow cold and weary. One night, the couple were parked beside a bridge when, naturally, an argument broke out. This time, it was worse than usual, though. In a fit of anger, the young woman pulled out a knife and stabbed her fiance's throat. She kept slashing until his head came off. She herself was bleeding from the struggle. She staggered out of the car and back down the hill, carrying her fiance's head. She eventually collapsed and died at the bottom of the hill, where she was found by locals the next day. Since then, the old bridge has been replaced by a new concrete one. However, some still say that on certain nights, if you stand on the bridge and call out the woman's name, her glowing blue spirit will appear at the top of the hill and move towards you. What you do at that point is honestly up to you, but given the vengeful state in which she died, most people don't stick around. Next up at number 9 now, we have the Defiance Werewolf. This is a very famous one. The people of Defiance in Ohio have claimed that for the past 45 years or so, they have been terrorised by a werewolf. It was first sighted in 1972. Over the summer, there were many sightings of a rampaging, hair-covered beast on two legs. It was said to have a muzzle and was always covered in rags. The local media went into a frenzy, and even the police opened up a case file on the sightings. There have been many sightings since then. Many of them were around a series of old railroad tracks in the town, usually late at night. One of the first sightings was by a Mr. Davis. Now he said, I was connecting an air hose between two cars and was looking down. I saw these huge hairy feet. Then I looked up and he was standing there with that big stick over his shoulder. When I started to say something, he took off for the woods. His friend, Mr. Jones, was with him at the time. He said, at first I thought the whole thing was a big joke. But when I saw how hairy and woolly it was, that was enough for me. Next up at number 8 now, we have Brubaker Bridge. According to legend, in the 1930s, there was a brutal one-car accident on this bridge over Sam's Run Creek, Butler County. The bridge is in a very rural area, and nobody actually discovered the crash victims until later that night, when a local farmer passed by. The farmer went to get help, and a total of 12 bodies were recovered. They were eventually identified and given proper burials. That wasn't the end of things though. Shortly after, the farmer who originally discovered the bodies claimed that while crossing the bridge one night after, his car suddenly cut out. He said that he heard 13 knocks on his car, then a hissing noise before suddenly the car just came back to life. Locals say that this is the spirit of the 13th victim, whose body was never recovered. The spirit is still said to haunt those who pass over the bridge, hoping they will be the ones to finally find its body and give them a proper burial. So that they may pass on peacefully. Next up at number 7 now, we have Stony Creek Cemetery. The story goes like this. In 1825, the local caretaker in Stony Creek Cemetery in Adams County made a discovery. At the bottom of a large tree was the body of a young man. It didn't take much to figure out the cause of death, as the man's head was completely missing. Although it's hard to beat that in terms of strangeness, there was one other thing. The crime scene was clean of any blood around this headless body. The police determined the murder must have taken place somewhere else before the perpetrator then dumped the body in the cemetery. Rumours began to spread that the head had not been cut off, but rather ripped off by something extremely powerful. The case remained open and unsolved for many years before entering books of folklore. There are those that say that some nights a misty figure appears under a tree in the cemetery, the ghost of this unidentified man, unable to find peace until his murder is solved. Moving on to number 6 now guys. we have. Patterson Tower. There are a number of theories about the origin of this strange tower, thought to be built by a John D. Patterson many years ago. According to legend, a group of teenagers in the 1960s took refuge in the tower during a thunderstorm. As the storm raged on, a lightning bolt hit the top of the tower. Electricity surged down the metal stair rail and electrocuted two of the teenagers, killing them almost instantly. They say that in the weeks afterwards, you could still see their charred outlines on the tower wall. Officials blocked 
blocked off the tower from dark tourists by placing metal plates across the door. Visitors still just ripped them off though to see what was inside. Legend now says that on stormy nights, the shadowy spirits of the teenagers who died can be seen in the tower. A bright bolt of lightning will illuminate their ghosts, making them glow as if they had just been hit by lightning. When the storm fades, so do they. Until the next time. Coming in at number 5 now, we have Little Sugar Creek. The town of Bellbrook is sometimes referred to as Ohio's Sleepy Hollow because of all the ghostly legends that originated there. A man called James Buckley ran a sawmill there many years ago. He lived in a small cabin and grew his business to great heights, becoming the wealthiest man in the town. One night, his newfound wealth attracted some robbers. When authorities finally arrived to help him, they found Buckley's headless body outside. The murder was never solved. People say the cabin was haunted then by his spirit. Those who ventured there say they have been confronted by a headless ghost, his arms outstretched as if begging for help. In time, the sawmill was demolished, but that didn't bring an end to the sightings. Locals still say that if you wander down to Little Sugar Creek, where the sawmill once stood, you can still see the ghost of James Buckley, unable to pass on peacefully while the case of his brutal murder has been left cold. Moving on to number 4 now, we have Otterbein Cemetery. This one is also known as Blood Bloody Horseshoe Grave. During the 1840s, an Ohioan called James Henry was involved with two women at the same time, Rachel Hodge and Mary Angle. He wanted to know which one to marry. One night while riding home, he fell asleep on his horse. He awoke to find his horse had not taken him home, but had instead stopped in front of Mary Angle's house. He took this as a sign, and soon he and Mary were married. As his wedding gift to her, he gave her the horse that brought them together. They lived happily, but in 1840, Mary died from one of the many prevalent diseases at the time. She was buried in Otterbein Cemetery. Henry began courting Rachel Hodge, and eventually the two were married. He gave her the same horse as a wedding gift. They hadn't been married long before locals noticed something strange about Mary's tombstone. There was a glowing outline of a horseshoe on it. James took this as a sign that Mary was displeased with his new marriage. They said he was cursed. One night, witnesses heard strange noises and lights coming from the cemetery. The next Next morning, James was found dead in his barn with the mark of a horseshoe on his forehead. His death was ruled an accident, as Henry had been alone in the barn at the time. All alone, except for one other creature. A horse. Even today, they say a strange horseshoe mark is still visible on Mary's tombstone, and that on some nights you can hear the sound of hooves trotting up the cemetery road. Moving on to number three now, we have Buxton Inn. This place has been going since 1812, making it one of the oldest inns in Ohio. In the mid 1800s, Major Buxton, after whom the inn was named, took control of the inn. There have been reports of ghosts there ever since. Many of the ghosts alleged to haunt the inn are said to be of previous owners. However, there's also strange knockings people have heard coming from the basement where the stagecoach drivers would have stayed. The door to that same basement is known to open and close by itself, and there have even been reports of footsteps coming up and down the stairs there. Major Buxton's spirit is said to be a shadowy figure, often sighted in the dining room. Another owner, Orin Granger, appears as an elderly woman wearing old fashioned breeches who is said to steal pies from the kitchen. There's also the lady in blue, who died in the inn and is recognisable by her distinct perfume. There's even a phantom cat that enters people's rooms at night in much the same way it did when it was alive. Next up at number 2 now, we have Old Raridan. The story goes that as European settlers first began to arrive in the Ohio Valley, wolf attacks on livestock became more and more frequent. Farmers began to hunt down the wolves, possibly to the point of extinction, but none of them could have predicted what came next. One wolf in particular always managed to escape the farmers. A huge grey one became known as Old Raridan. Farmers often reported seeing him and his mate wandering through the woods but they never could corner him. Eventually, they became the only wolves that remained. One night, the wolves were trapped with their backs against Big Rock, a famous landmark. The hunters opened fire and brought the female down. Just as the hunters set their dogs loose to finish her off, a loud cry echoed through the woods. Old Raridan leapt in front and fought the dogs off. The hunters opened fire and wounded him too. Eventually, they called off their dogs. Old Raridan dragged his now dead mate up to the top of Big Rock. Once there, he let out a thunderous howl across the backdrop of the moon and then slumped down beside his mate. All was quiet, but not forever. 
On certain nights, locals say you can still hear a painful howl and that if you head to the top of Big Rock, you'll be faced with the ghost of old Raradan, still ready to fight in his afterlife. And finally number one now, we have the Bloody Bridge. Sometimes you can just tell from these titles where these stories are heading. This bridge lies just outside of Spencerville, crossing the Miami Erie Canal. According to legend, the bridge was a site of a grisly murder in 1854. In the years before that, a rivalry grew between two local men, Bill Jones and Jack Billings. Both had fallen for a woman called Minnie Warren. In the end, Minnie chose Jack, sending Bill into a fit of rage. One night in 1854, Minnie and Jack began to cross the bridge on their way home from a party. At the other end though, stood Bill. He was holding an axe. They didn't have time to run. Bill took one swing and severed Jack's head clean off. Minnie screamed and jumped off the bridge and into her watery grave. Bill then disappeared until his skeleton was found years later in a well. Was it suicide or revenge from the couple's family? Either way, the years since then have seen reports of ghostly images of the murder couple on the bridge. Some even say that when the water gets dark enough, you can look over the bridge and see Minnie Warren's face staring right back at you in horror. Well, I can honestly take my fair share of axe murderers, haunted bridges, and vengeful ghosts, but for now, I think that will do. There are plenty more in Ohio though, so if you'd like a part two, let me know, or we can go somewhere else in the world entirely. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching, as always, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.